Hey, what's up, everyone? Cody Brown here from West Virginia Archives and History with today's edition of Mountain State History, The Last Public Hanging. On December 16, 1897, John F. Morgan, the perpetrator of the gruesome murders of several members of the Post Green family, was swung into eternity on a warm, sunny December day in Ripley, West Virginia. On the side of those gallows now sits the Jackson County Board of Education offices and parking lots adjacent to the Ripley High School baseball field. But in 1897, this land was jam-packed with onlookers who descended upon Ripley to see justice carried out. The festivities surrounding the hanging were characterized as carnival-like and many contemporary newspaper accounts. Due to the embarrassment that the legislator felt West Virginia was receiving from national media, this execution put a cap on the era of frontier justice as a spectator sport in West Virginia. But what caused John F. Morgan to carry out these heinous murders on that quiet rural farm south of Ripley? Well, John F. Morgan had a troubled childhood growing up. He bounced around from place to place, eventually finding a place with the Green family following the death of his mother. Morgan seemingly remained on good speaking terms with the Greens, but something unknown befell John F. Morgan one morning that led him to become incapable of committing these atrocities on the same people that had brought him into their lives as a youth. Perhaps provoked over financial disagreement with Chloe Green, Morgan stayed the night at the homestead the night before the murders. During the early pre-dawn night hours, Morgan followed the young Jimmy Green from behind and struck him in the head with a mattock and then proceeded to follow that up with more blunt force trauma to the young boy with a rock. Morgan then grabbed a hatchet from the wood box and used it to murder the 22-year-old Matilda Post who was preparing the day's breakfast. The hatchet was also used on Alice Post, but she miraculously survived and was able to escape to a nearby farm. But the witted Chloe Green was not as fortunate, who likely was the reason for whatever caused Morgan to snap. The people of Ripley were outraged. The family was highly thought of in the area, and swift justice was demanded by the townspeople. Local law enforcement feared a vigilante mob would take matters into their own hands, but they were able to quickly locate Morgan and arrest him. After his arrest, he was able to escape custody, making as far as neighboring Spencer in Roan County before being recaptured by authorities a mere 59 hours later. The court sentenced Morgan to hang for his appalling crime, a sentence that pleased the angry townspeople of Ripley. Thus, Sheriff Shen spread the word, which spread far and wide across the area. 5,000 onlookers arrived in Ripley as if they were awaiting the kickoff of the annual Ravenswood Ripley hatchet game. It was indeed entertainment for these spectators to see Morgan hang. The spectators came participating in an 1897 tailgate. There was drinking, partying, and singing in the days leading up to his execution. People across the country read about it as a carnival-like atmosphere, largely thanks to the reporting of the New York Sun. On the day Morgan's sentence was to be carried out, local law enforcement was certain that the execution would go uninterrupted. One of the deputies stated, Now I'll tell you, this here crowd came to see a hanging. Some of them started as much as 60 hours ago, and they traveled as much as 100 miles to see a hanging. Do you see? And they ain't going to leave their fun spoiled. And, and well, I'll tell you, there's going to be a hanging anyways. And the sheriff, he'd rather have it done regular than wait and take chances. Well, as I say, there's going to be a hanging anyways. You understand? I tell you, I was going to hold this thing off until the afternoon train got here. You can see there's a train that gets here at 1240, and there ain't any question but that it will bring a lot of people that wants to see this hanging. Now, I'd hold her off all right to accommodate them people, if it weren't for the fact that I heard tell this morning that some of this feller's friends got out of town this morning on an early train, and they're going to try to get the governor to interfere. Now, you know we ain't got no telegraph, and our telegraph dispatches, they come by train, and if there's any telegraph dispatches coming, they might come on that 1240 train. So I'm going to have this thing over before noon. I won't stand any interference. To someone reading this quote in the New York Sun, this likely reads as bloodthirsty, which likely fueled the embarrassment felt by the West Virginia legislature. 
Once the procession to the gallows had completed, Morgan stood knowing that these were the final minutes that he would spend on this earth. The crowd began to encourage Morgan to give a speech. Vendors could be heard in the background selling peanuts as if this were a baseball game, only adding to the imagery that this truly was a carnival-like atmosphere. The lever was pulled and John Morgan, long considered a member of the Post Green family, paid for his atrocious crimes on the hangman's noose. It was over. Morgan ensured this fate with that first blow to Jimmy Green's head. Morgan's body was put into a coffin, lifted into the wagon, and returned to Ripley, where was placed in a cell. John Morgan's remains now lie in an unmarked grave, perhaps fitting for a monster capable of perpetrating one of the most brutal crimes in Jackson County history. John Morgan's exit from this world on December 16, 1897, not only ended the life of John Morgan, it ended an era of frontier justice in West Virginia. Hangings would be carried out at the West Virginia State Penitentiary until 1949, when the electric chair took over as the official mode of execution. West Virginia has not carried out an execution since 1959. Alright everyone, the Post Green murders certainly resemble the plot of a Hollywood slasher film, but it is a story that deserves to be told. The quiet Post Green homestead near present day Fair Plain outside of Ripley was once a quiet farmland, innocent and simple. It was even once written in a 1932 article of the West Virginia Review that the Post Green homestead was a model, old time country home, and a hat throwing was nowhere to be found. Hard to fathom though, the place this quiet would garner national attention for the violence perpetrated on this land. A monument rests on this land to this day to serve as a memorial for the three members of the Post Green family who lost their lives. All right, that wraps up everything for this edition of Mountain State History. For everyone here at West Virginia Archives and History, I'm Cody Brown. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.